But there's a couple of things I want to ask about that because obviously the corpus callosum, which is that a, a sort of a big part of connectivity between the left and right hemispheres, and you're right that it's obviously it inhibits too. But there are lots of ways that that um, front to back and left to right connection happens. It's not just through that one or one part, is it? So there's lots of different ways to connect. And so I wondered how, partly about that, if you talk about that a little bit, but also where does that leave us in terms of plasticity? Because obviously you're talking at, there's cultural differences in how we process with context. In terms of plasticity and brain development and how we can learn new things, how can we bring that more together? Because obviously I think a big part of your book is you recognize that the left hemisphere and right hemisphere are pretty much both involved in every brain processing activity that we do. But your, your argument is that they have different kind of modes of being that represent almost different ways of being in the world. So how can we, I suppose, how can we bridge that gap? So it's going to be my last question, then I'll open it up to audience questions. Yeah. Um, yes, you're right. I mean, it's like the master and the emissary. They both need to be working for the place to thrive. But one is much more important than the other. The master is much more important than the emissary. Though, unfortunately, the emissary, because the emissary knows less, thinks it knows more. And, you know, there's a well-known phenomenon called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which demonstrates that people who think they know a lot know very little, and people who know a lot think they know little. So um, that's the situation we've got there. Um, I think your question was, um, well, there were two really. One was, uh, given that the corpus callosum is not the only way in which the two hemispheres communicate, how do I sort of square that? Well, um, first of all, the corpus callosum is certainly, the, the, by a very long way, the largest tract connecting the two hemispheres. There are two very slender commissures, which over evolution have become even slenderer. And the corpus callosum is like a hundred times bigger than either of them, and they're very limited in what they do. But it's still true that only 2% of neurons actually cross the corpus callosum, and that intra-hemispheric connections are by several orders of magnitude far greater than inter-hemispheric mm -hmm. connections. So the keeping of them apart is very important. Having said that, they both get feedback from the world all around them through the senses, through the body, um, and uh, below the level of the two hemispheres, the brain is um, not not divided, nor is it, nor is it at the brainstem level, where some quite important, sophisticated decisions are made. So um, you're right that it's not just that, but you know, to do justice to all of that would take me longer than I've got. Um, coming on to what do we do about it? Well, this is the million dollar question, but I think the the, the simplest way to address your point is that we haven't lost the capacity. It's very much, as I say, a matter of retuning the dial. It's true that our brain is plastic in the sense that it responds to the way we use it. So if we constantly stimulate it in a certain way, require it to think in a certain way, it will get more like that. And one of the things that concerns me is the effect, therefore, of um, our spending so much time interacting with a computer interface, which is um, something so stupid that a primitive man would never have had to encounter it. Um, and that in the, in the process, we, we blunt our own thinking processes in order to fit in with an algorithm or a process, which if we don't learn how to interact with it, we won't be able to get money out of our bank or travel or do anything. So um, that is worrying. But the, the overall thing is that if we did actually and we'd have to make a very big shift to education and to our priorities as a society. And indeed, if we don't, we won't survive. It's as simple as that. But if we do, our brain is there. The capacity has not been lost. We can learn to get it back and it would come back very fast. 